What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. Let's take a quick look at how you can use image maps and texture maps to drive your 3D paint effects inside Keyshot. With your 3D paint settings open, you're gonna have the option to change both your brush color and brush shape. There are a few ways you can leverage both these options to create unique and customizable effects when painting objects in your scenes. Let's start with brush shape. To make the most out of your brush shape input, you're gonna to wanna to use images that are textural and placed against a transparent background. By default, Keyshot 11's paint brush is a round shape, which can be useful for many applications, but if you wanna create custom branding or unique surface effects, you'll need to change your brush shape using the brush input. To create custom branding marks, import your logo or logo type as a transparent PNG through the brush shape input and adjust your brush's sizing and opacity to fit your needs. You can use your logo in brush mode. However, if the goal is to place a singular branding mark, the best option is to use the stamp mode. With stamp mode selected, I can place branding marks wherever needed, and I can also adjust my brush's color to alter the color of my logo. An added benefit of stamping logos rather than adding them as labels is that you can directly paint on or erase your markings to create weathering effects without having to use texture maps to drive them. Another way you can create unique branding marks with 3D Paint is to use your 3D Paint node to drive the opacity input of a label material. If you're using your brush to create logos through your parent material surface input, which I just did, you're limited to the material that your 3D Paint node is connected to. However, if you want your branding marks to be a different material, the best way to approach that is to apply a label that matches the material that you want for your branding mark, then attach the 3D Paint texture to the label's opacity input. You would then change your brush shape input the same way we did in the previous example. This will then allow you to give your branding marks the characteristics of your chosen label material, and you'll also be able to change the material's color directly from the label's material settings. This gives you a little bit more flexibility in regard to logo material compared to the previous example. Now that we have an understanding of brush shape inputs, let's take a quick look at brush color. If you watched our 3D Paint overview, you'll likely be familiar with this portion of the quick tip. And if not, I highly recommend giving that one a watch after this video. But there are essentially three ways you can work with your brush's color when using 3D Paint. The first is to simply click on the color window and select a custom color through the color picker window the same way you would when changing any brush shape's color. The second option is to change the color input just to the left of the color window. From here, you can use any image texture to drive your brush's color. In this case, I'm adding rust to the tank surface, so I'm using a rust texture I sourced online. With the second method, you're gonna get a spray paint-like effect when painting on your object's surface. Essentially, your brush will spit out many instances of the same image as you lay down your brush stroke, and the number of instances will be entirely dependent on your brush's flow rate and spacing. This can be really useful when you're trying to create custom gradient brushes or you have other unique effects in mind. However, it's not ideal when the goal is to create a discernible one-to-one -one map texture, such as the rust layer I'm trying to add to this model. Which leads me to my last method of using image textures, which is through the material graph. If you're using a version of Keyshot that has access to the material graph, you'll be able to drag and drop your image texture into the workspace and attach the newly added texture to your 3D Paint Node's color input. Done this way, you'll be able to adjust your image texture to your desired scale and paint a one-to-one -one representation of the image texture that is attached to the color input. Hopefully this quick tip gives you an idea of how you can leverage 3D Paint in your Keyshot workflows. And as always, if you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this quick tip in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share.